We are now going to be setting up VLLM and we're going to be doing this locally. I'm going to be deploying this on the Quad 3090 rig. Again, 512 gigs RAM for 3090s. And also we've added in some additional flash storage because I anticipate some big models coming down the pipeline pretty soon. Following along with the guides that we've prior put out is something you need to do so that you have your open web UI up and running, which we will be using that for our chat interface. Of course, the first guide was Olama and open web UI in an LXC container. The second guide was Llama C++, and in that guide we created a backup that we're going to use today for really fast restore restoration. And this is actually one of the really cool parts about doing it the way that we have done it here. So the next thing that we're going to do is restore our image. Just click on the image, go ahead, click on restore. I'm going to restore this to our much larger size. I've got two NVMEs over there. I'm expecting DeepSeek to drop their latest updates here really soon. So VLLM is the host name we're going to use. I'm going to use 60 cores. The rest of it is going to pre-fill and you can just leave it as it is. Go ahead, click restore. This actually is pretty quick. There will be two things that we are going to change after this image is up and running. The first is I'm going to give it some more hard drive space, which is allocated on the fly. Don't over allocate your space. That's actually one of the most constraining things aside from RAM in most home lab setups. The second thing that we're going to change is the IP address that we use. That'll be basically for the API. It's going to retain the prior IP address that we had statically set at 71. So I'll show you here really quick how to change those two things in our container. Come over to network and double click and change that from 71 to 72 and click OK. That's how fast that one is. And then come over to resources, click the disk. You can see that's 40 gigs. Now we're gonna be using the smallest, I think that I could find out there, which is Jan V1 4B. It's a 4B, but this should be applicable and demonstrate the exact same steps you would need to take for any of the models that you might find out there. It's just, do you have enough VRAM? And 4B, that should run on almost any graphics card out there. If you got 12 gigabytes of VRAM, 16 gigabytes definitely should get it, I think. Going to volume actions and resize. I'm gonna give it 20 extra gigabytes of space and it's done just that fast. So come back over here to your VLLM login. And the next thing you wanna do is come over to Digital Spaceport's updated guide for VLLM. And I did get the hyphen hyphen thing figured out and working, so hooray. All right, and so we'll just copy and paste into here. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is install Python 3 and pip, and we're gonna use something called pip env, which is, which is an environment manager, very simplistic environment manager. You could use more complicated things like UV and other stuff, but I, I think pip env is super duper basic, so we're gonna use that here. The next thing we're gonna do is come over and scroll down a little bit. Next, we're gonna install the VLLM software, Flash Attention, Transformers, and Flash Infer. So copy that, come over here, paste it in, and let it go. This one will take a little bit longer to install, for sure a little bit longer to install. But at the end of this, we'll be ready to actually take our next step, which is pulling the model down. That's literally how fast it is. It's just launched. It's not yet out in a guff. You're waiting for Unsloth. You wanna play with it. You can use VLLM. You can use VLLM for a lot of things. And as I have mentioned in all of these guides, none of these guides are deep dives on performance or how to do things. These are just the base level getting you up and running with a really solid, very competent system that you can use for rapidly creating and testing out things and have safe, secure backups Basically, building a better system is what this whole guide set has been around. And yeah, we've gone through four pieces of software. Well, five if you include Proxmox. But this has been a pretty decent, I would guess, hour and a half total time of information conveyed from me to you to get you up and running with the latest and greatest and the capabilities to run the latest and greatest that always almost is going to be coming out in safe tensor format on Hugging Face first. Okay, that definitely took some time, but it did get done. I'll talk through it with you as we go through it here. Let me type reset really quick so you can get a less distracting view of it. If you, we'll just start from the front and kind of work backwards. 
and we're going to be serving. So this is basically setting up and running a server API that we're going to be accessing for the Jan HQ Jan V1 4B. Like I mentioned, small model should run on most everything. Max model length. We've got that at 32K. The API key that we created is nerdtastic, port 42069, host 0.0.0.0. .0, .0. This will allow us to access it from the IP address of the machine, which we just set to 72. Tensor at parallel, I've got set to four because I've got four GPUs there. Uh, and we also have enable auto tool choice and tool call parser is set to Hermes. So as you run this, what it's gonna do is reach out to Hugging Face. Well, first it's gonna check its cache and see, do I have it? If it doesn't have it, it's gonna reach out and pull down the model files. You may need to enter a Hugging Face API key for certain models out there if you're downloading them. This model in particular I knew was just gonna work, so I thought this was a good one to go to. We'll have a whole Hugging Face and Transformers video. Yes, Hugging Face and Transformers video will happen here at some point, which we'll go through all that and I'll show you how to set things up for downloads, specify a specific directory you want your models to go to, not just kind of the default. And you can see it pulling down and downloading them right now. So this is pretty cool, this is it. Like, this is literally it. As soon as we get a couple of green lines here at the end of all of this uh, output, we'll be able to go to our Open Web UI instance and that'll be it. That's pretty simplistic and that's what really all of this guide has been about is how to get you guys up and running with the most hassle-free, clear, clearly understandable to you and simplistic setup that you literally are gonna have a hard time messing up. And if you do mess it up, you've got really easy backups and snapshots that you can go to. All right, and we now have this up and running. Let's come over to our open web UI. Now I'm in the settings, and this is a little bit confusing because there's multiple settings, but if you go to the lower left and click settings and then click admin settings and then connections, that's where we're at right now. I've already got this one kind of hooked up, so let me just go ahead and show you a couple things that you probably wanna do. So the prefix ID, I've prefixed it with a VLLM and a hyphen so that I know that it's coming from VLLM, any of the models that show up in the dropdown from the selector. For our key, we've got nerdtastic, we've got the IP address and port, and forward slash V1. Hit the little verify connection, you should green up over there, click save, and you can see that that's all you really gotta do. I did also change the prefix ID for the Llama C++ instance as well, so that I know where they're coming from whenever they show up. I should actually, at this point in time, do this one for this, uh, a Llama. There we go. And yeah, that one's local. So we now have three backends connected to our Open Web UI interface. If we come over here, you can see Jan is loaded up there. And I'll just uh, drop it a quick, hey Jan. Now it's not gonna display the tokens per second directly here, but you can see that it's actually quite fast. Ask it how to get started using Quinn effectively. And of course, Jan is a fine tune of Quinn. So I do expect that we will be using VLLM, hopefully in the pretty near term future for running the latest DeepSeq, which I expect the V3 instruct, which is usable by humans to be out sometime probably in the next 24 hours. I mean, fingers crossed there. The base model, like I covered in the prior, hey, it's out. Uh, the base model is not usable. Uh, for most intents and purposes, but there you have it. You are now up and running with VLLM. So in this guide, I showed you the very fast steps to restore your backup, change your IP address, provision some additional storage space, and download a model after you've installed VLLM and its dependencies inside a shell. And this is not at all a comprehensive guide on pipenv or anything Python related, but the nature of the beast essentially is Python that we're dealing with here with VLLM. Snapshot. And just take that snapshot there. And that's it. Now I have a rollback to a known good spot and no further configuration would be needed. I think this is pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Big shout out to our channel members and everybody who's been tossing me $5 or whatever you guys toss me. I don't even know these currencies, but thank you guys that are tossing me these currencies. Of course, our Buy Me A Coffee people and our Patreons, big hats off to you as well. Of course, you can find that on digitalspaceport.com. This is really the culmination of a lot of effort over the past almost year that has led me to the clearest way to get some complex stuff 
uh, up and running very simplistically for you. So make sure to check out this video to get up and running with Open Web UI and Olama, our first container in Proxmox for our LXC guides, and then our Llama C++ that is a prerequisite since we just restored that backup and did a little tinkering to it as we showed you how to create everything up to that point in the prior guide. So those two work together to give you where you're at today with this one. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, and I look forward to everybody's comments down below.